Welcome to From First to Home. I'm your host, Scott Harris, a fan of both life and baseball. In each episode, we're going to round the bases together. We'll start in the batter's box, proceed around the bases from first to home. Come on into the stadium and take a seat wherever you'd like. Here in episode three, we're going to put first things first, review week three of the 95 Mariner season, and catch up with the 2021 Mariners. Before we get started, I'd like to wish my beautiful wife a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Amy. I know she's thinking to herself as she hears this, are you in the closet talking to yourself again? (laughs) She makes me laugh on a regular basis. Love you, babe. Let's jump into the batter's box. In week three of the Refuse to Lose 1995 season, the Mariners are 9-7 and seven and just a couple of weeks away from our superstar Ken Griffey Jr. crashing into the Kingdom right center field fence. Wow. Devastating, you'd think, for the year. He misses half the season. Well, now three weeks into this podcast thing, I'm enjoying the creative process. Thank you for all your feedback. I appreciate that. And it seems like editing is probably the biggest challenge so far. Let's jog down to first base. Putting first things first. During our first two episodes, we covered the bases on how everything begins and ends at home. And putting first things first. Well, we expanded our home plate beyond the 17 inches. Did you measure your standards this week? Remember, as Coach Scolino said in his speech, most of all, keep yourself at 17 inches. What is a standard and keeps first things first? For me, the standard is that if we meet, you feel better that we met. Say that first impression. First is to get my head right. What am I thinking about and why? What has me distracted? What is under my skin? Is there anything pissing you off right now? Let's eliminate all distractions first or your top five distractions. Putting first things first, maybe hit pause right here and consider this. Write out your top five priorities. Yes, pen to paper. Let's make it physical. Remember, too many priorities equals no priorities. What are your top five? Now work on your top one until it's completed. And then move on to your next number one priority. First things first. When a distraction pops up during this time and it's not in the top five, keeping first things first means that we didn't have to respond to that distraction until you've completed your top five list. You may find that that distraction is just that. It's a distraction. There's nothing more for us to do with it. Oh, and remember that multitasking is a myth. Work on one until it's done. Let's head over to second base and catch up with the 2021 Mariners. Starting pitching has gone from a six-man rotation to four with a season-ending injury to Jim Paxton. Additionally, with injuries to starters Marco Gonzalez and Nick Margavicious, hopefully both of those will be returning in the next week or so. Let's get back soon, boys. Well, on May 5th, John Means was almost perfect for the Baltimore Orioles against the Mariners. Means retired all 27 batters that he faced in a 6-0 victory over the Mariners at T-Mobile Park. But he did allow a base runner when Sam Haggerty reached on a third strike wild pitch in the third inning. The Orioles then caught Haggerty attempting to steal second base, but the wild pitch nullifies the perfect game bid. All I can do is tip my cap to John Means. Well done. The Mariners are currently 18-16 and and two and a half games behind the Oakland A's in second place. I'm happy to see them competing most nights despite these pitching setbacks. Halfway around the bases, it's time for baseball funnies and baseball quotes. Is there a baseball in heaven? Two old men had been best friends for years, and they both lived into their 90s. Suddenly, one of them falls deathly ill. His friend comes to visit him on his deathbed, and they're reminiscing about their long friendship when the dying man's friend asks, Listen, when you die, do me a favor. I want to know if there's baseball in heaven. The dying man said, We've been friend for years. This I can do for you. And then he dies. A couple of days later, his surviving friend is sleeping when he hears his friend's voice. The voice says, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is, yes, there's baseball in heaven. Well, then what's the bad news? 
You're pitching tomorrow. <laughs> How about a baseball quote? Baseball is like church. Many attend, few understand. Manager Leo DeRocher. Taking the next 90 feet over to third base, the most challenging hit in baseball. Going back to challenging times in Mariner history, during those strike-shortened seasons in 94 and 95. In late July of 94, tiles fell from the ceiling 30 minutes before the stadium was set to open for a game against the Baltimore Orioles, forcing the Mariners to play the rest of what would be a short season on the road. Fix it or replace it, something had to be done with the Dome if the city had any hope of holding on to the team. When four 15-pound acoustic tiles dropped 180 feet from the Kingdom ceiling into the choice seats behind home plate, some Seattle Mariners wondered if the current stadium renovation would include a retractable roof. No one was hurt in the mishap several hours before the game against the Orioles that marked the first time a sporting event at the Kingdom had been postponed. The incident occurred before the stadium's doors were open for the fans and the players were warming up out on the field away from the debris. Kingdom officials called off the rest of the Mariner homestand in a four-game weekend series against the Red Sox that was scheduled, rescheduled for Boston's Fenway Park. Hey, here's a fun fact. The Mariners' only home rainout game was during this time in Boston when one of the games was rained out. The M's were technically a home team. Hopefully the challenges you're facing today are not a collapsing roof. Let's bring it on home. You may be listening to this on your way home, or you may be at home right now, or when you walk in home, are you putting your best foot forward, walking in being thankful? Maybe say thankful on how much you appreciate, appreciate the first person that you see. Just say thank you and I appreciate you. What does the word home have you thinking right now? Home team, home plate, Homer Simpson, the house that I live in, whatever it is, how can we improve it? Start by doing one thing for someone you care about. They will appreciate it, and you'll feel better for giving first. As we turn down the stadium lights this week, we've successfully rounded the bases together. In our first couple of episodes, I've shared that everything begins at home, and let's keep first things first. You and I realize these two things change often. Therefore, we have to focus on what do we do first? And what does home mean to me? So stay in the game, don't get discouraged, and keep first things first. We typically won't let something distract us that is not in our top five priorities, right? When was the last time you put together a top five distraction list? Start by recognizing what we must first stop doing. I'd like to give a birthday shout out to my nephew, Jeremy. Happy 33rd, dude. This week was also Mother's Day. Big love to all the amazing moms out there. Thank you for always keeping the homes running smoothly. One day is not nearly enough to show our appreciation for everything that you do. Well, that concludes Episode 3. Thanks again for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe to your favorite podcast platforms and send me your favorite life or baseball stories. Can't wait to hear them. Or send me your thoughts on this podcast. How can I make it better? How can I improve? Share this recording with someone that loves both life and baseball. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you. From first to home, life lessons and baseball stories. Until next week, as the glove says to the baseball, catch you later. <laughs>